Hello, everyone. It is Wednesday afternoon. I'm very excited to be here with you all. Uh, welcome to those of you who are watching on YouTube, on Facebook, on LinkedIn, wherever in the world you're catching us. <laughs> we have this streaming out to multiple places and really excited to be here for another episode of the Event Hustler Show. Um, every week we talk to amazing, amazing people. And this week I'm very excited to welcome Michael Buckley from Cadence. Michael, hello. How are you? Hello, Liz. Hello, everyone. Thank you so much for joining us. Um, we have not talked yet, and this is crazy, on the podcast about our upcoming Taxi Talk Global Conference that's coming up on September 28th and 29th. I remember uh, touching base with you. At this point, it's got to be a year ago, learning about Cadence for the first time, and we're really excited that you guys will be powering the virtual platform of Taxi Talk Global coming up in just, what is it, 10 days now? No, it's coming so <laughs> quick. It is. Uh, but we were talking right before we went live about how this is like what event planners live for, this rush that happens right before the event and all the excitement that happens. Um, so, Michael, first, why don't you just kind of introduce yourself? I want people to learn a little bit about you and your background and what led you to start Cadence. And then we can talk more about Cadence and today's topic, all about emotions at, at virtual events, especially. Wonderful. We'll, we'll do. Yeah. On that, on that note about like that energy that you feel kind of before the event, I heard someone recently say, if, if you don't have butterflies, it's not like that same passion. You know, if, if once the butterflies go away, it's kind of like that passion's a little bit gone. So I love feeling it because it's like, man, I can't wait. I can't wait to see what's going to happen. Um, <laughs> I love that energy. Um, so hi, everyone. I'm Michael Buckley, uh, CEO of Cadence. And, uh, I know that there's, you know, almost a thousand different event platforms that are out there nowadays. So I, I kind of want to just maybe say a little bit about like where we came from that might give you a better idea of kind of what we look to accomplish with our platform. Um, I started in custom enterprise software. So really like learning the ins and outs of someone's day to day job to try to create a solution or, or a platform that would help with the efficiencies of, of someone's job. It's something like a, that's a huge passion of mine. And I think my first job out of college, I started working for a, a communications agency that was doing a lot of events. And man, that was like, for, for someone that loves to learn workflows, <laughs> that delighted me to no end seeing what like an event organizer or planner has to go through in so many different factors of the travel management and the itineraries, the venue sourcing and contracting, uh, the number of attendees, the content management, how complex <laughs> schedules could be. That, that was like my, my a, a dream to be able to kind of learn the ins and outs of that industry. Um, so that's what really led to us creating the event organizer planner side of Cadence. Um, we really want to simplify the event management so that you guys can focus on what's most important, which is which is the content and the experiences, not event registration or getting your attendees into the event platform. Um, the other side, which I know we're going to talk about a bunch today, is for the actual audience themselves. Um, events are so powerful. I think they're one of the number one mediums for creating experiences and, and creating stories and, and, and fostering uh, emotions. And um, I think it's one of the best places to like learn, to become inspired, to meet people, to connect with people. And uh, we wanted to create a platform that takes what's already incredible about events and then brings more visibility to them perhaps or heightens them either further. So that energy and the excitement leading up to the event, like we're talking about uh, for coming up soon for Taxi Talk, um, connecting the audience to all the moments and the experiences that are occurring, and then being able to kind of relive it in some way and, and leaving a lasting impression. So that that's what we really try to focus on for the attendee experience um, through the event website and the, and the event apps that we've created. So tell me about your, your personal kind of event uh, persona. For example, I'm super um, introverted. So I always find it's funny, although I talk to tons of event planners who are very introverted and would like totally go to an event and stand in the corner. I'm the kind of person who purposely is behind the scenes so that I don't have to like, I think networking is like the most awkward thing in the world. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Are you the same way? Or are you just like love to be out there and partying and connecting with people and attending every event you can get your hands on? Uh, complete introvert, um, type B, I would say, you know, um, I never grew up kind of wanting to be the actor, uh, wanted, grew up wanting to be like the producer or the writer, you know, behind the scenes. 
Yeah. And that comes up a ton in regards to virtual events where everyone says that virtual events um, are decreased networking opportunities. When I would go to in-person events, I'm much more like nervous or, or introverted. And maybe I would only talk to the person sitting to the left or right of me in the session I'm attending or would go to the bar and hope that some social lubricant would help me to like start yeah. talking to everyone around me, right? Um, but what I'm seeing with the event platforms or, or networking tools, I'm able to actually get the ice broken a little bit for me more in like um, really cool, like interested in the same topics or interests or speed network that, that's randomized. Um, for me personally, that helps me get connected to people more than my social anxiety, I suppose, or, or more introvertedness when I'm in person at events. Yeah, I completely agree. And it helps kind of sort through. We've all been in those conversations where you're like, I have nothing in common with this person, but I don't know how to get out of it, you know, <laughs> like standing in person. Um, so virtual has a ton of benefits. I do see we have some live uh, watchers. So I want to acknowledge you and please let you let us know your comments and thoughts. Tell us about your uh, event persona in the comments. And if you have any questions, we'd love to work them in. Uh, but you were talking a little bit about building cadence on the planner side and then on the attendee side, really thinking about that emotion. And I, I thought that was an interesting topic for today because similar to the way that people are saying virtual events have a lack of networking capabilities, a lot of people feel like you're just talking to a screen. <laughs> a, a lot of speakers I hear feel like they're talking to nobody. They're just standing in their office all day. And there is that kind of uh, feeling, or at least that I've heard, that virtual events can be just very cold. It's like about the content and that's it. Uh, clearly, you don't feel the same way. So, what do you, what are your thoughts around this topic? Why are we? Why is this something that you personally are interested in and obsessed with? Because I think it's so important. It's that piece that matters like the most potentially. Uh, well, one, I think I'm a, like a, a very emotional person myself. Maybe that's part of like the introspective nature. Um, most of the Cadence team members won't be surprised that any given day I might just start crying because of like joy or just being touched <laughs> emotionally in some way. Um, and events have always, that, that's why events are so special is because they can create emotions. And I know a lot of times emotions come from our, our sensory experiences, right? So when it was in person, of course, you can tap into those um, senses more, right? The, the, the visuals that you see in the venue and, and the lighting, um, the sounds that you can create in the music and even just when you're walking into a venue, um, the taste of the food, the smell of the venue, which could be good or bad often, um, <laughs> and the tangible touch of the venue and the giveaways, or if you're lucky, sometimes I guess another person, right? Um, but that that creates the, the experience which fosters the emotions. But when it is virtual, you, you, there's less of you, um, being able to really tap into the taste um, and the smell and, and the touch. Um, you can do a little bit of the touch with uh, event platforms on, on app, having a lot more like haptic feedback in the ways that you can kind of engage in certain aspects. But um, I think it's the visuals and 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 the and the sounds that you really can make an important part of a virtual event, mm. and the emotions will come very much from storytelling um, that I think are are really important. Um, the visual aspect, I think you were already creating branding anyway, you know, for this incredible event that you would have all cascaded through the venue. It's important to do that with your uh, event platform too. You know, whether it's the event platform, your registration platform, your marketing automation platform, creating your branding and your visuals that ideally to do tell the story of the event that can create like heightened emotions, making sure that those platforms can be an extension of your branding and your visuals. Um, within our platform, we focus so extensively on imagery and, and videos because I think that does become a huge component of connecting an attendee or an audience member to your brand. Um, so yeah. I think that's a, a huge part of it. Um, and then music, you know, I think people are doing a fantastic job in leading up to the um, sessions, maybe over um, certain aspects of the session, um, the segues, the video interstitials, the music. Um, you can intersperse that in really interesting ways that still do create that heightened emotions, I think. There's a lot of talk about virtual events having to become a lot more like TV productions. And yeah. 
you know, I think that it plays a lot into what you're talking about, where the visuals elicit emotion. I mean, people get they binge watch hours and hours and hours of their favorite television show. And there's a reason for that. I don't think people would necessarily look at that and say, oh, it's so lacking in emotional experience. Uh, but what they've done in terms of the way that the entertainment value, the storytelling that you mentioned is really important. These are skills that I think a lot of event planners have to learn. We're so used to building an agenda and minute by minute and sometimes thinking about the transitions and sometimes being able to think about entertainment factor. Um, but this is all like completely uncharted for a lot of event planners. Not everyone, of course, but where are you getting inspiration for this or where do you suggest planners learn about ways to kind of up the emotion factor at their events? Well, I am, um, I have no production background and um, I think that's one of the best things that I've seen really come out of the last 18 to 24 months is platforms such as StreamYard, which we're on now, or uh, we love utilizing social live um, in our kind of high end productions, but those platforms, I think one, it's really exciting for us in the event industry because it's kind of had us learn new skills, which is always yeah. exciting. But I've always thought of having to create a TV style broadcast being really complicated, you know, or I have to be a really high end production agency to do it. And I've loved learning these tools that are quite easy to use of like, all right, now let's go to uh, a, a layout of two next to each other. Or now it's a panel discussion. How do you want to lay it out? What kind of branded background do you want in the back? Do you want to have lower thirds appear or other quotes um, or data appear? I've loved learning that myself um, to turn like webinars that we do or events. So I would recommend any um, event planner, organizer um, become familiar with those tools because they're really fun. It's all about like crafting experiences. And I love being able to do that. Um, and it's not just like high end production companies that are also loving these tools, too, because it's making it even easier. Uh, yeah. for them. Yeah, that's true. Um, it's exciting because these platforms like StreamYard and Social Live are constantly coming out with new things too. So you, you're, you're trying new things. You're like, oh, let's upload a video and play that first. <laughs> um, now, Cadence is a beautiful virtual platform, but as you were talking, I it occurred to me that we really should talk about Symphony within Cadence and what that is and the capabilities of it. Because I think for a lot of event planners, what you guys are building inside Cadence also makes it a lot easier to manage that flow and play the videos in between sessions and pop up. You know, we have, we're doing some things with gamification during Taxi Talk. And so can you tell people, like, they hear Cadence, but what's sure. Symphony? <laughs> what, what is Liz talking about? Sure. How does that play into this whole thing? Yeah, so we, we, we began building the platform about seven years ago, and Cadence has always been, like, the overarching event. All the experiences that go on across the event, which, of course, can be registration through all the communications you want to send through the beautiful schedule that you can be quite, quite easy in the complex schedule you want to create, right? Um, the connecting and the networking and the socialization. And um, then, of course, in 2020, when there was the much of the need for virtual, luckily, we had two of our larger customers ask us, one, um, having regional meetings isn't as cost effective as it used to be in regards to always doing the venue and the airfare and the ground transportation. Yeah. Is there a way to have these uh, remote meetings online? And then also, even when you're in person, is there a way to actually kind of follow along with the slides that are being presented or the video? So you can actually be in the back of a large um, auditorium or ballroom, right? And actually be following along on your iPad. So that's kind of where um, Symphony really started from. And then of course, with the need starting in March of last year to kind of go fully virtual. So when we set out to kind of really commercialize Symphony and think about what we wanted to achieve with it, I think one of the things that was the biggest issue is that you often might have speakers or panelists or moderators isolated from the attendees themselves. Um, and being able to create an experience where they're all in that same space together I think is a really important component of a, of a virtual meeting or online meeting. Cause you know, obviously when the, in person, the speakers on stage and they're presenting and they can kind of hear um, the audience's reaction, whether it's the laughter, the inspiration, maybe sometimes booze or even like a, a pin <laughs> drop to know that maybe it's not resonating. 
Yeah. Um, and you lose that a little bit in the virtual space. So I think that's nice to kind of be able to have the speakers feel the energy of the audience in the messaging chat where we really wanted to not just have text-based conversation, but images, emotions, gifts, which I think tell a lot more of a the emotional side of feedback, especially for people that are maybe um, nonverbal in, in how they'd like to share their, yeah. their, their thoughts. Um, we also wanted to take all the different content formats that you might want to present at any given session, right? You might want to be having main stage broadcast into a video interstitial, but back into maybe a live Q and A, maybe into going over a static sponsor slide into a live poll trivia question into an embedded Miro for collaboration back to main stage. Right? So being able to have what you might do in like a webinar, combined with what you might do in a meeting, combined mm -hmm. with what you might do at like an event, being able to switch between those experiences in one singular platform, I think again was like the ease of use for the moderators and the panelists and the speakers was a huge component of what we were looking to do there. That's that complexity that you were talking about earlier that event planners have, you know, the ideal run of show is, you know, this leads to that, then this. And even when you're using a tool like StreamYard or Social Live or fill in the blank with whatever you're using, it's a lot of buttons to click and things to upload. And it's it's very clunky to do what you're able to do within Symphony, where you can just kind of click on the next thing and upload the next thing and click on that. Um, Another feature that I wanted to talk about is the live feed. Uh, that's something that's more unique to Cadence. I haven't seen that in a lot of places, but we're talking about emotions and people are obviously obsessed with Facebook and Instagram and all these social platforms. It made perfect sense to me when I saw that you have this feed uh, where people can share GIFs and comments and pictures. Um, has that always been a part of Cadence? I assume yes. Yeah. <laughs> and, and how do you see great organizations using that space? I think um, there, there's so many ways that people use it. You know, th the first thing is that you, an organization uses this within events within Cadence, but people also use it across time within Cadence. And I think that like socializing your organization to kind of have like a private space, like a safe space that is not public, right? By using like social media platforms yeah. is incredibly important to like, and this was before obviously, a remote workforces really became a huge aspect, but how can you um, celebrate wins? How can you um, connect with each other? How can you share announcements, um, updates? Um, how, and a lot of your organizations end up using this and like, there's all these incredible things that are going on within the organization. How can I share what's happening in Europe with what's happening in the US, with what's happening in Latin America? And that can be like, celebrating the wins of a, of a product launch or a new market strategy, or that can be uh, deals that are being done. It could be um, best practices that are happening really effectively in Europe that you want to share in the US, right? So there's that aspect of like within an organization, having a socialization area to share everything that's happening. With events, I've seen it used in so many incredible ways of, you're seeing this more and more of share content before the event begins. So we see people say like, share a five second video clip of what you're most excited about um, for the return to in-person events for our event in November, right? And you have all these people then sharing um, these incredible videos that can then be commented and liked and shared. But then often those organizers are then taking those videos to then maybe like put into a, a StreamYard or a Social Live or a Symphony throughout the event to create more of that human approach to an mm -hmm. event. Because when you're trying to tell a story, your audience is often the storytellers. So um, people use it all the time for like generating the excitement and the hype leading up to the event, a, a huge component. People, when it was in person, people were like sharing all of their like travel stories, photos, yeah. videos, which is always amazing to see everyone come from across the world to travel to this location. And, and you have that sense of like, we're all in this together. Um, we see this in um, personal development workshops or events that occur, right? When you when you go to any events, a lot of times that it could be more of the, the health and wellness or personal side. So having that safe space for people to like share what their goals are, having all the other attendees or community members like 
um, encourage, um, hold each other accountable, um, announce. Because a lot of times if I have a goal, if I actually announce it to others, I'm much more likely to then carry it out because yeah. I haven't internalized it. I've shared it. So there's all these incredible use cases of how people use like a live feed or a social feed to bring everyone together to have that conversation. Um, and then people use it all the time too for all the photos and videos, especially when it was in person. So you have that beautiful gallery of all the moments that happened leading up to throughout and after your event. So that after the event, you can also have like your photographers upload all their photos so that across time, three months, six months, a year, you have all those beautiful moments that happened that were captured in the live feed. And that a lot of the inspiration comes from like what you see Facebook do, where it's like, yeah. you've been friends with this person for nine years. You want to go back and look at the photos. And sometimes too, you've only actually really been friends with that person. And there's like three photos of you, of you in Facebook. So it's like a really sad, like, oh, yeah, you're cool. like, we but, really need to take more pictures. <laughs> <laughs> well, and that, um, uh, that made me think of a few things. Um, one is in the virtual world, that space I think is even more important because people are off living their own lives and it brings them together in that one place where they're not physically together. Um, and also it's not another tab, you know, like um, there's, the, you're watching the content and if you, if there was no live feed, they'd have to go on Twitter or on Instagram or have their phone out. And it's just less likely that they're going to bother to do that. And if they do, they might not pay attention to what's <laughs> happening on the actual page, but also for hybrid, it's a great feature to bring the in-person and the virtual audiences together in a way that is meaningful and, you know, really uh, connects those audiences. But you mentioned, you know, the Facebook three months, six months, nine months, a lot of people in the industry talking about uh, year round communities. I'm just going to ask you these questions that I didn't prepare you for at all, but what are your thoughts and what are Cadence's thoughts around brands using Cadence year round and what that would mean for things like the live feed and building in the emotions in these events? Does that just give you 10 times the capability to build that community? Or do you think it's just everyone's just talking about it and we're not really going to do 365? <laughs> I think it is the way that um, every organization should be thinking about what meetings, webinars, events, community, connecting and conversation should be across time. Uh, but I first wanted to note when you said um, the importance of like having that live feed within your event, I think that's mm -hmm. um, what you guys are doing with your Taxi Talk of event upcoming, taking so many incredible experiences and integrating that into the holistic event so that it's not like segmented or it feels like you're going to another experience. I think that's such a huge, important part of events, right? And, and having it look and feel like your brand, even though it's different systems, it's all within one so that you don't like kind of lose your audience by going to multiple different new tabs or yeah. new apps uh, and that fall off. So I think that's a, a huge kind of um, focus of what event organizers should be doing. And for those that are attending, uh, your event upcoming uh, that, that's really showing that in spades. Um, but so for, for community, that, that's actually where we began. We, we began because um, the employee experience of learn, like getting communications from an organization, like from, from your company, constantly being communicated with vision, mission, strategy, updates, um, constantly being able to communicate back to your organization insights. This is clear. This is unclear being able to connect with all of your other employees. That's how we, how we started. And we were, and we found that actually like meetings, webinars, and events was where that was happening most effectively. Yeah. Um, best way to deliver strategy information, best way to gather it back from audience, best place to connect them and best place to have experiences that forge memories of the information that you were giving them. Right. Um, and so once you start to be like, well, you want to have this incredible schedule, you want to be able to have all the people that are here, you want to be able to distribute resources, being videos, podcasts, websites, you want to be able to have socialization in the live feed and messaging, mm -hmm. all these things clearly apply outside of an event, right? So whether I'm an organization that wants to socialize and engage with my employees, 365, whether I want to bring all of my customers and prospective customers into this community to share with them information, resources, connect them together, 
to socialize, to have meetings, webinars, and events. We think of that as communities, companies, even clubs use it for like, you have all your members that are part of this club, be able to communicate with them, give them all the resources they need, the directory of people that are here at the club so they can connect and socialize. And you may have meetings and events like the Taco Tuesdays um, <laughs> or the gala, right? These use cases apply to every type of company that is out there. And even if I was a solo entrepreneur that believed in legal tech or um, understood um, NFCs really well, and I wanted to start to bring people in so that I can then teach them about what I know to then um, maybe have them also then socialize around these topics of interest. That's definitely the future of, I think, these kind of collaboration spaces where events are a huge part of it, but it's all these things outside of an event too that is like how you engage with communities, customers, employees. Yeah, it's such a powerful tool beyond like like you're saying, you know, the use case of the events and the, whether they're in person, virtual or hybrid that bring that community together. But what I think a lot of virtual platforms are missing, even though they see this 365 trend, is all the stuff that happens in between. They they don't have uh, and I'm not telling everyone to go out and do this, but they don't have the live feeds and they don't have the way for your group of people, whether they're a club or employees or whatever, to connect with each other in between all of that stuff. And I think that's where the relationships are formed and the emotions are heightened because they have this extra connection. Um, and I think it's a huge mental shift for event planners to go from thinking about once a year event or four times a year event to keeping these people engaged all year round. Everyone talks about how hard it is, but the truth is it's really just about putting the right people in the right space. I mean, Facebook is not sitting there driving content to us all, like telling us today we need to talk about. People come up with plenty of things to talk about on their own, but it's about that tool. That's, you know, with Taxi Talk, that's one of the things we really want to do is bring our event planner community together all the time. And the tools are hard to come by. Um, and that matters a lot. So it's that your focus on emotions feeds in not only to, you know, how the events are run and symphony and things that we've talked about, but these other components that feed into that pre-event, in between all of those events, during the event, um, which I think is just so important. But it, it, it ultimately is going to make it much easier for the, the events teams because imagine outside of a singular event, you have every single attendee that's ever attended any of your events. Um, we also segment those by customers too, because sometimes you might have like sure. an, an actual like CRM or customer side to it. You have all the companies that may have exhibited before, right? You have all of the content that you've used. And then you have like event templates, you have your branding templates, you can duplicate and copy events. So now when I'm creating my new event, maybe it's as easy as copy it. Do I want to pull from the same registration list previous event? You know, and, and, and it, it just makes the whole, I guess, like flywheel of, of an events team easier and easier and easier every time you use an event. So that's just going to make it so much easier because um, I'm sure that there's so many event organizers, too, that have so much decision fatigue of having to, like, demo with 100 different event <laughs> platforms. And then even when you have, like, three to five that you love, there's still, like, a learning curve. And there's still, like, if you are a brand agency, what images do I have to create this time? What are the video yeah. specs? What can I tell the customer client uh, of the capabilities? Because I have to remember which platform could do wh which. <laughs> right. Right, right. Um, so kind of once that kind of goes away, it does really lead you to that. I just have to focus on content and experiences, not the complexity of event management, which we're really excited about. I think that's going to be the future for sure. I love that you mentioned the flywheel. I was reading that recently um, and really thinking about how that applies from business perspective, but it's very smart to think about it from an event perspective. How does this, what are we doing that kind of feeds into that flywheel to make it easier and easier to be successful every single time? Um, now I got to go back and read it again. <laughs> Thanks we, for that. We, we think about that flywheel a lot for the emotions of an event organizer, because uh, too often what I, I see people are like, oh my goodness, my event's coming up in 90 days. I'm so stressed, I'm so stressed, I'm so stressed. And then the event is happening. You're like, oh, I can't wait, I can't wait, I can't. And then, <laughs> and then it ends and then you're like, oh, vacation. And I can't, and then, and then sometimes you might be dreading the next one starting. Where ideally the first 90 days are like, 
I'm creating all these incredible ideas. I can't wait for my audience to see it. The event is about to start and you have that excitement of, man, our audience is going to see this. And then the end, the event ends and the emotions are, that was so much fun. I can't wait to do the next one. Right. And that, and unfortunately yeah. that's not often the emotions that we feel, but ultimately it should be. Um, and that's something yeah. that we think consciously of, of checking in with the event organizer as they go through the journey. How are we feeling right now? Stressed, overwhelmed, confused um, versus um, inspired, empowered, excited. You know, yeah. we want to make sure that that's constantly part of the emotional journey. That's uh, one of the main reasons I started doing Taxi Talk because, you know, when you're doing, which we still do work for clients, but when you're working on a client's dream and vision and their budgets and their decisions, it feels a lot more like the first situation. <laughs> <laughs> you're like, I just want to do this. And I think it's going to be fun. You get to build it out yourself. It's so much fun. Everyone should host their own events <laughs> in addition to doing uh, stuff for your clients. Um, so we are almost at time. I know you are a very busy man, so I'm not going to keep you. But if people want to connect with you or with Cadence, where would you like me to send them? We'll do it in the links, of course. But uh, sure. Yeah. So uh, our, our event website, of course, would be wonderful. Um, we can also share with you. We have a weekly webinar series that's focused on one uh, platform education, but often like use cases, best practices that I think are really helpful for event organizers, planners, producers, content creators, um, as well as social media. We would love for you to uh, to follow along with us. And then, of course, uh, upcoming at Taxi Talk, uh, we'll really get, get deep into the emotions and the storytelling and best practices that we've seen about how you can craft amazing stories for your events and and really bring your audience into the storytelling because your audience are the actors in this story yeah. that you're telling, which is really exciting to be. To... Yeah. So we do have a session at Taxi Talk Global uh, with Michael talking about this topic in a little more detail. So please check it out. In addition, it's a great way for all of you planners who are watching this, whether live or recorded, to see the Cadence platform for yourself. I always think it's easier to attend an event on a platform as compared to looking at a demo or hearing from a colleague. Um, and it's one of the reasons we mix it up all the time so that you can check out different things. Uh, so please go to Taxi Talk Global as well, taxitalkglobal.com. It's free for planners to register and we will have over a thousand planners together, which is so exciting. The whole format, by the way, is all about connection and venting. It's the theme is unplugged. So we actually have a vent session, the idea we stole from Cadence and one of their <laughs> events. Um, but really just this opportunity to relax a little bit to have conversations. There are a few sessions, but there's a lot more of these like round tables where here's the topic and let's just hash it out and talk it out. And so we're really excited to do that in the Cadence platform. So Michael, thank you so much for joining us. Thank you to all of our live watchers as well. Um, can't wait to see you all again next week at 1.30 p.m. Eastern on Wednesdays for another Event Hustler show. Uh, Michael, thank you so much for your time today. Thank you so much, Liz. Thank you, everyone, for joining. Thanks, everyone. Have a great day.